I'm Eddie Wong. I'm the host of Fresh Off the Boat. I'm the writer of the memoir Fresh Off the Boat. I'm the owner and chef at Bauhaus and all around wild boy. There was a manifesto for Fresh Off the Boat, just keep it rare and funky, you know? Very, very rare, very uplifting, very funky. You know what, they always describe the show as like, Gonzo Food Travel Show, Tony Bourdain meets Chinatown, you know, like, I don't know, man, like, we travel, it's a band of brothers situation where it's me, the producer David Lavin, uh, the shooter Chris Valona, Jan, and then Bunches over here is the editor. The show is about much more than food, it's about I mean, I, th I think it's about the human experience. You could entirely not like food and still like the show. Yeah, if you look at all the projects that I do, whether it's Fresh Off the Boat, the show, whether it's Bauhaus, whether it's Fresh Off the Boat, the memoir, they all have the same through line. It's really about self-expression, being true to yourself, and, and breaking all the rules. You know, Sam Sifton went to one of my restaurants before. He called it, it was like your, Eddie, your boy Eddie's basement. And that's what it is. We play music off of Spotify, a lot of dip set, a lot of clips, a lot of young Jeezy, and it's just fun. It's the restaurant that I always wanted to hang out at in as a kid. My memoir, Fresh Off the Boat, is very much about a person. You could be in any country, any part of the globe, but it is about someone who is the other, who is outcast, and then shedding their identity and the stigma that people attach to him to reclaim it on his own terms. That's what the book is about. You know, America, you know, attaches so many stigmas and stereotypes to our identities. They co-opt our cultures in very, very strange ways. And what I said was, I refuse to be sold this way to the American consciousness, and I'm gonna sell it back to you my way. The, the most special moment to me, getting up surfing was great. Going to get a do do an episode with my dad was amazing. But the moment that really affected me the most was, it's coming up, we have an episode with Sujie Doujiang Da Wang, which is world's best soy milk place. And the woman there, when we interviewed her, was like, we've had a lot of famous chefs come through, we've had reporters come through, but never a Taiwanese boy come home that cared so much about the food and wanted to represent it the right way. And she's like, Jayo. And in, Thai in Chinese, Jayo means like, add gas. And that's what they say for teams to rally. They're like, add gas, Jayo. It's like the rallying cry. And I remember getting in the van, all of us were leaving and that whole restaurant came out, she came out and they're all just yelling, Jayo. And, and that totally affected me to see like people in this country so happy that like, the boy came home to put them on and that was really ill. I think the biggest revelation like as, as a creative person and as a business person is to realize, trust your instincts. Whatever you feel about a project or a person or a partner or a location, it's right. Do you know what I mean? Like, people can try to convince you into things, but if it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's right, it's right. And like, anytime I've second guessed myself and let someone second guess me, it's been wrong. I think our generation is paralyzed. And it's a gift and a curse that we have all this technology that we can create the things that we want to create and, and it's all in our hands. But this generation is, is cursed by an embarrassment of riches. But the thing people need to understand is don't look to the people that came before you and be like, oh my God, I can't do this. Oh my God, my idea has been done before. Yeah, shit has been done, but it wasn't done by you. Do you know what I mean? And like, until you told your story, the world hasn't heard it. So you just gotta go do it. And, and I think so many people think that their first project is gonna be the greatest thing ever happened. And they're, they're like fine tuning it and, and combing it over and over. And like, yo, it's gonna suck. And the sooner you just, you know, come up snake eyes, the better off your life will be because you have to start rock bottom and then just get good. And it's your duty as a human being when the universe decides to speak to you to share it with other people and to memorialize that shit. Right. From like cave paintings to YouTube videos, like that's all it is. This shit is like basic, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm.
Yo, I actually, when I'm chilling, I talk to people on Twitter. Like, I kind of relax talking to people on Twitter and looking and, oh, that's what this guy's saying, that's what girl, this girl's saying. And, and I do that. Um, I really, honestly, I just get high and eat cocktail peanuts and watch HBO. That's what I do. And I watch a lot of Knicks games. I used to eat gummy bears, but like I was looking crazy fat on the show. So we switched to cocktail peanuts, eating more protein, less carbs.